Hi everyone, this is Cherie from Paper Pieces and Leftovers. I'm going to put two of these together that are mirrored for a customer. She asked for them to not have the vest or the hat as they were in the water parasailing. I'm going to ombre these, but the little white spots on the faces are for the whites of the eyes and everybody asks about them. I spilled Scentsy wax. Don't mind me. Thanks, Leanne. But these are cut out in quick cut design space and they're even circles. So the width and height are both the same of 0 0.08. I cut out hundreds at a time just so I don't have to fuss with the little white dots of the eyes. All right. So I'm going to ombre both of these and I cut out two. That way I could ombre the top one and put foam squares on the bottom to pop it up. Now, the spots you're seeing are me taking my finger and dipping it in the color to make sure that I'm using the right colors and that they're not too light or too dark, hence the nice fingers. Oh, look, Kansas City Chiefs colors, not on purpose. Now, these are the two colors that I'm going to go with for the yellow, Wild Honey and Fossilized Amber by Tim Holtz. In my hand, I have a cordless hot glue gun. It's from Amazon and it's by Dremel. For my red parachute topping, I'm going to use Tim Holtz Distressed Ink Colors Fired Brick and Aged Mahogany. This yarn, I'm going to attach the parachute to Franklin. And I got this yarn from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a pack of three, black, red, and white. It's over by the scrapbooking aisle. There on the pattern, they had cardstock for what I'm replacing with the string, just so it's more free and not fixed for her to attach it to her paper piecing layout. Now, these blending brushes I got from Amazon. I ordered two sets. I wash them when the color I need is lighter and they're both too dark for me to actually get a light color out of it. The glass plate I work on I got from Joann's and time and time again 40% off coupon. It is 22 inches by 16 inches and it is great for almost every multimedia. <clears throat> excuse me, as far as ink, glue, stamping, drawing, anything you could imagine. I'm doing a voiceover of my video only because I'm playing it at two times speed. Due to it being over an hour long, I was able to cut it down to approximately 40 minutes. So here I'm just going to ombre the edges. I start off with one color and try to saturate the outer edges and drag it into the middle. But if I don't like the color, that's why I pulled out the second color and you'll see me mixing them together on the glass. What that does is it pulls up the bright tones and then the rich dark tones together since they don't have an in-between color for me that I'm happy with. And I'll go over these pieces several times until they're at my liking. Usually I just use a finger dauber and Catherine Pooler ink, but for bigger pieces, when I ombre them, it just gives them a lot more definition, color, and I actually enjoy doing the ombre. So here I mixed the two colors and now I'm just gonna keep blending. They actually do have a colorless blender as well. So if your colors are too dark or you can see your line and you do not like how it appears, you can use the colorless blender. I've only used it a handful of times just because I'll keep working this ink until it's where I want it. But the thing with this ink is you use a distress sprayer bottle with water from about six inches and you spray straight ahead and let the water fall onto it and it gives it a water oxidized appearance. You just put a paper towel over it, pat it, and it'll suck the water up and leave little water spots for you. So I'm getting carried away with this little red parachute. 
I guess all I can say is I didn't want much waste and that's why I will scrape the um, glass mat with my brush over and over to try to get as much ink as I can off the glass mat so I'm not wasting. I try to waste as little as possible. I know here I was chit-chatting about my mom and my grandma, but the video was just way too long, even though I would have loved to include everything. So there, I finished that piece. I'm happy with it. I'm going to close these up, clean up my glass mat. I had to go get the distress sprayer. The, um, distress sprayer, yes. That way I could wash off my glass mat. It covers my dream box table. You don't have to go with the one as big as I did. It just size proportionate. It doesn't cover my dream box desk, but it does cover over half of it. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the yellows. This one I'm using fossilized amber and wild honey. Did the same thing, used my fingertips, touched it several times. That there is a spot. It wouldn't come off. I'm going to say Callie did it. That sounds good. She might have sneezed or something with some food that she gets that puppy fresh food where it's um, meat and real vegetables, real meat has to stay in the fridge. It's got DHA and all those other additives that are in baby formula. And I think she might have just sneezed and it just left a little spot. So that's why I used the white gel pen to put the little pen mark. So I knew to keep that as my bottom piece to pop up my phone tape on. My blenders are from Amazon. My distress inks I get from Michaels when they're on sale. Just because they're cheaper than going any other way. Even Hobby Lobby, I do hit them up. But... Between Michael's and Hobby Lobby, I get all the colors I need. And I do walk into Hobby Lobby or do Michael's online at times. If I don't feel like going into a Michael's store. Because there's some days that I'll go to one and not the other. So, mixing the colors. <clears throat> it gives me a medium. I noticed that the one was a little too light and the other was too dark. So that's why a lot of them I'll mix because you want it in between. You don't want it too light. You don't want it too dark. But once you get your base coat down, if you want to pull the light in farther and then just do the darker on the outer edges, I do that as well. Or sometimes I will actually mix both together like I did with the reds because the red, the one was too dark. And the other was perfect, but I wanted a little bit more dark and depth to it. So here I'm almost done. I'm just going to keep going until it's even, as even as I can get it. And once they're done being ombre I set them aside because it does leave a little bit of a film on it where if you touch it, it will transfer to your fingertips. And if you touch something else, now you have the color. And Callie just brought me her dress that she had on for the day. She wore it outside, so I have to hand wash it. Dad got her dress this morning. She is quite the character. Nonstop busy. Love her to death. Molly is with my mother-in-law. Molly misses us very much, but my mother-in-law fell in love with her since we rescued her. So she's only three houses down from us. She's not far. I went and seen her yesterday with Callie and she was just hanging on to me for dear life because she missed me, but she was okay when I left. And Callie, my mother-in-law said, oh no, I remember breeding and how busy this little thing is. She's so cute though, I can't help it. So I'm gonna clean up my glass mat make sure I get it all off just that way it doesn't end up on my fingertips or on pieces that I'm working on. I've transferred color onto other pieces and have actually had to dispose of and redo. I had a little bit of a glue mark on there that I took off. 
I was trying to figure out what it was and showing you guys what I was looking at and pointing at when I was recording and talking, but I'm sorry, an hour and 20 minute video is just too long even for me. Even with all the talking, I'm still doing the voiceover. Now, I used to use Windex on this, but I don't like the ammonia. I went to ammonia-free Windex and it's just a waste. So water and a rag is great. So what I did is I cut out both of the Franklin bears because she wanted two of them did two different color parachutes and then when I cut out Franklin I mirrored both of them that way they're facing each other so if she wants one coming in from the left page and one coming in from the right page they can hover in from the edges of the paper I will check my fingers several times just to make sure that I don't have any ink on my fingers the best I can the other distress sprayer in my hand now that's not the regular water one. That's water and a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get all of the oils out of my fingers. Otherwise, you'll leave fingerprints on your pieces. So I've pre-inked all these little guys. Right now, I don't even know what I was looking up on the computer because it was 2 o'clock this morning. But I think I was looking up the sizes, I'm pretty sure, because I had to change the parachute. It was a little too big, and I wanted to make sure that I had cut it out at the size that I did on the other set I did. But I used Barely Art Glue from 12x12 12 12 Cardstock Shop, and most of my supplies, paper, pattern paper, cardstock solids, Swiss dots, all come from 12x12 12 12 Cardstock Dot Shop. I will put the link in the bio, so there's no, well, the description, so there's no issues finding it for anybody that's unfamiliar now the back leg goes on first because it's almost like a shadow and then this is going to go on next it's the same concept as the other franklin's and the barely art glue goes a long way and i like it as much as i like the glitter art glue but some days like today because my tremors were pretty bad it gives me more time than the art glitter glue which is almost like an instant cement super glue so this little gummy eraser I got from Hobby Lobby, it removes all of the ink that might you know, pop out onto a piece you don't want it on. And here I was looking at the pattern and forgot that they don't have the ears attached to the base and I forgot to do it myself in design space, but I wasn't gonna go back and cut the pieces out again and meld the ears to the base and then flatten it so that way I had something to support the ears. So since this one is flying in from the left, now I'm gonna do the one flying in from the right towards the right, well, flying in from the left towards the right, there you go. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but it's just reversed because like I said, I mirrored it. This is the way that the pattern comes. The other one that I did first is the one that's actually the mirrored image. And so I'm going to glue the leg down first, and then I'm going to glue the body to it. I don't know what happened with attaching the ears because I went back and looked at the one that I completed, even with the hat, and the ears had nothing to do with the hat. And I'm a little concerned the ears are going to fall off. And I'll show you what I did on the back of them once we get that far. So here, we're just going to do the same thing. Glue the pinks to the inner, well, the inner pink pads to the ears. Oh, yes. My little stinky dog. She jumped up on my leg and scared me and wanted to come say hi. I'm going to have to go in and actually include the sound she made there because it was just so sweet. But yes, she loves us. She's tiny. She's under two pounds. She's not going to get a whole lot bigger. She's going on three months. She's just a love bug. Sorry about that. I try to keep her away from the table while I'm scrapbooking because even though she's not a shedding dog, at least now, but she's a short hair for the most part, so I don't foresee a lot of hair. I just don't want hair on my stuff. I wouldn't want to purchase anything with hair attached to it. So I try not to fondle her too much when I'm scrapbooking. If I do touch her, I usually go back and wipe everything down, but I held her over my lap instead of the table. She wanted on the table, but I told her no and I put her back on the floor. 
So we're going to go ahead and attach the head here and the ears I'm going to put behind the base. I'm not going to put them in between because I don't want the bulges as there's no hat for this one to wear, no helmet. The little white spots are the whites of the eyes. I use a really sticky mat. That way they stick so I don't lose them during the flipping, the turning, the inking once I take them off the mat and put them on the face. And the reason they're there is that way when they leave the little sticky residue area, it's under the muzzle so nobody will know. Gluing is mm, so much fun. Not. <laughs> I don't mind gluing. It's just sometimes because I can't fill my fingers, I will touch the glue and touch something else. And now I've just transferred glue everywhere. When Callie got on my lap, I put the bone folder down when I picked her up and I didn't see where I put it. So I grabbed the other bone folder. Those things are great. They even out your glue. That way, one, there's no lumps. And two, everywhere underneath your pieces have glue. This is my stamping up chalk. I just put it in a little container that I got from Amazon. That way I'm not pulling out that big old palette from stamping up. The chalks are discontinued. I can still get you the colors and I'm pretty sure you can find it as I just got two palettes off of eBay a month ago because I wanted the pinks. Let me know if you guys want those because pink blush for the cheeks is very hard to find. The foam tool I'm using is the brush sticks. I've given the link for that um, on other videos. Let me know if you need it because I can just go find the video or go into my Amazon, buy it again, and just copy and paste it in the description for you guys as well. Let's see, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm having tremors. Now, if I played this in real time because it's sped up a little over two times, you would see... And I think I actually said a couple bad words because I couldn't quite grab it. And I was trying and it's several attempts and my hand was moving all over. But I got it. That's the end result. So I take them off the face now because I'm going to start working on the eyes and <clears throat> touch up the cheeks a little bit more before I put the whites, um, the white chalk in the actual, on the, the black part of the eye. Now this is pan pastel and here I was mentioning I've been asked to make a stamp eyelash stamp for that oval kind of eye and I can't. So mint silhouette no longer makes the size that I need the stamping block and the stamps would end up costing everybody $50 to get because it's $14.99 for the rubber you get two of them. Well, I get two of them, which is fine. That's $8. And then I had to go find the stamping blocks. And the only place I can find them is on Etsy. A lady makes them. She charges $10 for the block. And it's going to be heavier than the block that comes with it, which makes shipping go up. And I just, I know for a fact it's not worth it. So the Pan Pastel, this one's titanium white. And you guys will hear me like a broken record. I don't wear makeup. This is a makeup brush, but I believe one of the makeup girls that I seen on TikTok, she used this roundish brush to put on lipstick. So I want to say that it's actually a lipstick brush. I opened my front door for some fresh air. Sorry about the traffic. Um, I tap off the excess just because it is such a deep bright white and I don't want all the excess all over the place but I'll go over it a couple times until I get the brightness where I want it so it stands out and I try not to go more than halfway up and I don't go cover complete edge to edge I just do like like a little half moon there so this is the Tombow Mono micro eraser amazon i've given the link for that as well but it allows precision erasing and the fine line applicator bottle i'm using now that's from amazon now this is how you put 
very small parts onto your paper pieces and not get glue everywhere. You're going to pick the piece up. I'm going to struggle. Like I said, I was having some tremors, but I'm used to them. And once you get a hold of the piece, oh yeah, my tremors were doing real good. <clears throat> once you get a hold of the piece, you dab your piece into the glue on your finger and then you tap the excess off and apply the small piece to whatever it's going to get adhered to. Works great with titles as well. The reason they won't let me go back into nursing is one, I can't sit up and hold up my head that long without being absolutely miserable. But second, could you imagine me giving you any kind of injection or starting your IV with my hand shaking that bad? All right, so those are on. <clears throat> now, I got this idea from one of the girls that I used to scrapbook with, Sarah. She has peppermint cactus. She doesn't scrapbook much anymore, which I was mad at her. Not real mad, but I'm just saying, you know, oh, you don't want to scrapbook with me anymore. But she does play with fa foam boards, which they look like real wood slats. So if you want to see her work now, and even her old scrapbooking pieces, which are absolutely adorable, uh, she owns the Facebook page, Peppermint Cactus. But she taught me how to glue even titles on. When you have those really fine titles, I picked up these to imitate. So this is just pretending to put the glue on a really fine title letter. And what you're going to do then is flip it over and tap the excess off of the back of your hand and then put your title onto whatever the back piece that supports it is. So I got the whites of the eyes on and next we're going to move my stuff around. Here I was back on the stamp where the sad thing is, I can still get the rubber, so if the rubber ever goes bad for anybody, if you guys want to mail me back the one that went bad or it wasn't stamping the right way because you left it in the heat, we can always swap out the rubber, which is a stamp part. And I might look into acrylic stamps. That's what I was talking about here. But I'm just sad that I can't get the wood blocks. That's part of the kit and I bought all of the ones Amazon had. They had hundreds, I bought them all and all my stamps are gone. So this here, <clears throat> this is what it looks like when it's laser cut and there's no ink on it. So there was no stamping and I had to draw my eyelashes in. And it's only because I forgot that I was gonna ink this one and I took the other one off and I was just too lazy to swap it out. So I went ahead and just left it on there. And then after all this and explaining it, I threw it off to the side and I still haven't inked it and it's been hours. Now I'm just gonna attach the muzzle to both of them. And if you notice, I don't press down in the middle and towards the top. I don't want that part to sink in between the eyes. It feels weird doing voiceovers for you guys, but I just couldn't fathom having an hour and a half long, well, it was an hour and 20 some odd minute long video. And I just felt like I was rambling on, even though I was just letting everybody know that I ended up getting half of my grandmother's ashes because the other half of her went on to my grandpa's grave because he was military um, and they weren't married even though they were together for 44 years. They didn't get married because she couldn't afford to lose her insurance for six months to a year in order to get on TRICARE because she had an irregular heart rhythm and actually I think that's what caused her to have the massive heart attack which caused her to lose her life was she had eaten something, got food poisoning and was vomiting while she wasn't able to hold her meds down. And I'm pretty sure that that's what caused it. And just stress on her body, not having the medication, but you know, an 81 year old vomiting for 24 hours and not being able to hold anything down, that's wear and tear on your body. So I'm looking at these two, I'm making sure that 
they're where I want them and now I'm digging for my acetate. I do not try to freehand the line that goes down the muzzle anymore. He has a drunk line if I don't use the acetate. The acetate comes in a booklet and there's a protective sheath over it that you peel off. I left the sheath on it on both sides, not because I need to protect it, but because I wanted it a little bit thicker. And I go straight down the acetate and then I draw the little circle on the bottom. Um, the pattern does come with the circles for the mouth if you want to cut them out, but I just draw them on. That's one more small thing for me to have to attach and on a bad day, I'm not messing with it because I can always go back and add more ink, make it bigger or smaller. If one side is larger than the other, I can even it out versus gluing it on too far to the left or right once the line's on. Now the Jelly Roll pens, so far these are my go-to. This is a 08. I've tried so many gel pens and none of them show up once they have been used on top of chalk. They just don't wanna write anymore. So I add the white to the eyes, the little dot underneath the paper dot. And you can add um, extra if you want more than one. And you'll see me writing on my fingers just because that clears any blockage from the chalk, the paper um, residue, the little fibers from the paper. That way it's a smooth roll. And I don't go in a circle motion, I actually dab it. That way the circle slowly expands itself and is more even. And now I'm gonna put the little accents on the nose. I used to try to go all the way across, but bad days, I go not even halfway, maybe a quarter. And that's only because it's less noticeable if I do have tremors. You're not going to see the crooked line if it's short. Now what I'm doing with the fine tip tweezers is I'm cleaning up the circle um, of the gel pen. And once it dries, I'll go back and dab it again. That was just because I was off center a little bit and a little part of it was not round. So I just went with the tip of my tweezers and scraped it off and it scrapes off very easily. Now this is what I was talking about with the ears. Normally you would put the ears down before the head, but they weren't on the base. So I glued the back of the head to make sure that they were going to be where I wanted them. And then I laid the head down on it. Now what I'm doing is because I want the ears in the same place, I'm flipping him over so I can use him as a guide. That way the ears are pretty symmetrical when you look at the one from the left to the right. And I'm going to do the same thing for the yarn when I attach the yarn to the parachute from the bear to the parachute. Now here I'm holding it up close to me because I'm zoomed in, it's not that close to my face, but I just slid the ears, barely art glue for the wind, because if that was art glitter glue, it wouldn't have moved. And I wanted them in the same spot on both bears, because I didn't want one ear in the middle and one where his cheekbone was. So that was just the way that I could get them as even as possible. Now, I ordered a box of washi tape from Amazon. Do you guys remember back in the 90s when Celestial was a huge thing? Our bedrooms, well, I, I was late teens, early 20s in the 90s, but anyhow. The Celestial theme was the go-to for everything, and this box just brought back so many memories and laughs. Oh my gosh, what a phase. And the weird thing is, is the phases are coming back from our teen years and young adolescent years. But is that not celestial tape for the win? Now here I'm just ripping off pieces because this is going to be what I reinforce the ears to the bear with. 
the glue is going to hold forever but just because they do go in an envelope in between more cardstock for shipping i don't want them moving around and the ear bending backwards so i'm just going to make sure that it really stays and this is my preference you don't have to do this i'm extra with everything i do don't judge me lol i'm just kidding so they're both done except their arms and i was just saying this is where i keep my little templates that way my eyes are always the same space apart and now here comes some fun stuff when you guys see me put marks on my pieces these are erasable pens they came from amazon and the bag of 40 pens was eight or ten dollars and they're by senku you can just put in erasable pens and they don't erase with anything but the cap and that little thing next to my right hand with the green disc and the hole in the middle but my daughter already went through the bag took the ones she wanted there's a mixture you don't really get a pick it's whatever is in there is in there but you can do i think it's seven pens 14 28 and 42 and then 56 you can order large quantities i just got a big bag but this is where when i put my markings on my pieces i can erase them and you'll never see the markings sometimes i mark on white pieces and you don't want it showing through so once you're getting ready to glue you can basically almost erase all of it and leave just a fine very faint line so it doesn't show through the piece that's glued on top of it so now i'm going to super glue my yarn to the parachutes and i'm going to do a v-shape the loop is going to go behind the ear and the free open pieces are going to be attached to the actual parachute and here's the hot glue gun you just hold the button down it takes four seconds to warm up not even four seconds it's a micro fine tip and i can't feel so i try not to touch it because i wouldn't know that i burnt myself until the blisters were there and i seen them so this one out of all the glue sticks i've ever had this is probably one of my favorites or not glue sticks glue guns even though it's a glue pen and the reason I use this instead of glue is because if I use the Barely Art glue or glitter glue or some kind of wet glue, one, it's going to ripple the bottom paper it's on. And that's not important as far as cosmetic purposes as it's on the bottom, but it sometimes will throw the edges off when you try to layer something. And then the next reason why is because, and I'm touching hot glue, I can't feel it, I'm fine. I just hate that it sticks to my fingers, but that's okay. The other reason why now I'm gonna put a top layer on, not because it needs to be reinforced, but that way when I put my foam squares on this to pop it up, I put the glue stick in there now, um, cause the other one was out. I got the micro glue sticks, they're like four inches tall and they're super cute. I bought a bag of 30 of them off of Amazon. But <clears throat> the reason why I put the layer on the top is that way when I do put um, the top parachute on the bottom, there won't be divots where the glue sink around the yarn. And now I'm just putting it on his ears. I was just trying to kind of get where I wanted it to be centered. And I'm pulling it as I'm holding it to let it set and that's just so I can make sure it's as even as I can make it. And I want to say that my finger absorbed the glue and not my yarn. It was on one of them. I don't remember which one. It might have been this one. And I was laughing because it came off. Yeah, it was this one. <laughs> so when I went to go pick it up, the yarn was not attached to the ear all the way. Yeah it was attached to my finger. So I just had to remove it 
I just had to shift it around so it would stay. My daughter doesn't understand how I can just hold my finger on hot glue. I don't have any feeling, and that's what I try to get my husband and my kids to understand, but they'll never understand. So after being down all these weeks, it's so good to be back scrapbooking. Now, I'm just going to chit-chat why I do this to fill you guys in as I only have a couple moments left. The reason why my videos aren't being posted to Marjorie Ann or my Paper Pieces page yet our 12 by 12 cardstock shop has to make them live on their page before I can post them to mine. She only posts one to two videos a week and there are a few of us design team members for 12 by 12 cardstock shop. And as you guys know, I'm also a design team member for Marjorie Ann Designs, but I have to kind of follow suit where if 12 by 12 cardstock says, hey, you can't post it until I post it. Well, then that means I can't share it to Marjorie Ann or my paper pieces until 12 by 12 cardstock shop posts it. And I'm fine with that. So I'm just going to start making more videos as they don't want every single video I do to go to them. They have plenty. They just ask us new items, which there's going to be a sneak peek here of pieces I did on 12 by 12 cardstock shop. So make sure you follow their YouTube and their Facebook because the giveaway, they're going to be pieces I made and they're single pieces, not a set. That's why they're being given away. So make sure you go follow them and set your alerts on so you guys can know when it's going um, to be given away. And I will post it on my page too, just to kind of keep everybody in the loop. So that way nothing's missed. <clears throat> now I'm going to put his arms on. I debated a bathing suit, but I'm not sure because I don't know if the picture she has of her parasailers had bikinis on or full bathing suits, speedos, shorts, and that's okay. So we left the bears naked and I'm okay with that. I'm now adding just the highlight where the reflection would be from the sun, the light per se. If you're never sure, you can actually hold a flashlight down, lay it on the table facing you or from the left or right. And where your bright areas are is where you would add your white gel pen and or your white chalk. Pen pastels are from Amazon as well. They are the brightest. I no longer cover the whole nose with the pan pastel because I, I like the darkness of the black when it's up against the, the black of the eyes. So I just put a little white spot of my chalk where my white line on my nose is now. And I'm adding some white gel pen just to the inner pads of his ears. Nothing fancy, just a little bit so he's not plain and they're not done. I'm going to see if she wants me to throw some designs on him. I thought about doing blue and white stars on this one and green and blue circles on the yellow, but I'm not sure yet. You guys will see the finished product once I post it on my page, but I'm now coming up on the end of the video. Sorry for trying to get an hour and a half of talking into 39.39 .39 minutes and seconds. I hope everybody had a good Mother's Day and you guys will start seeing more videos from me. I won't be doing any this weekend as I'm going to go to a Dodger game Saturday with my husband and my daughter and my mother-in-law is going to dog sit for me because Callie is a busy body. Oh, but she's so cute. And now I'm gluing the arms down. I do not glue the whole thing. I just glue the upper third of the one that goes on the top and then on the bottom, same thing because it's gonna slide underneath the pattern itself. Any questions, let me know. It might take me a little bit to get back to you guys just cause my weekends are busy with my husband now that he's off on weekends for the most part. And thanks for following. Make sure to like and share just to kind of get my videos out there more so I could do more giveaways. Take care guys.